In this video, we'll be going over everything you need to know about Fracture. How do you play it, both on attack and defense? What kind of comp should I go for? And what you should be looking to do when nothing goes according to plan. So let's jump right in. Starting with a basic map overview, Fracture has a unique layout, different from any other map in the pool. No, I'm not talking about the four orbs, though that is also a part of it. But as most of you likely know, the spawns are pretty weird. The defenders spawn in the middle of the map, with spike sites both directly left and right of them. Meanwhile, the starting area of attackers essentially surrounds the whole entire map. Yes, of course, the actual spawn point is always outside of A main, but you get much more control than that by virtue of the zip lines leading to either side of the map. The idea of this layout is not just to get beginner players lost though. In fact, there's a bit of a philosophy behind it. By making the mid area defenders spawn, you can create an interesting dynamic where attackers can easily split sites without having to work the map first. And in addition, defenders have super fast rotations so that they're always able to field at least three players on either site. The design behind Fracture is clear. Riot wanted a fast paced map with lots of rushes, strong executes, and exciting gameplay. But just because they had an idea in mind doesn't actually mean it'll play out that way. So let's dive a bit deeper, going over a typical Fracture composition and why that matters anyway. When playing a map like Fracture, your team composition is going to be pretty important, so let's talk about it. A typical Fracture comp kinda looks like this. You have a brimstone to smoke important angles and speed up any executes or rushes into sites. You have a raise for one to do funny duelist things, but also especially to make sure you actually get out of the choke points, making use of her blast packs. You got a breach to flash and stun your team into sites, as well as to walk the duelist and hold their hand. Then you need a killjoy or cipher to anchor sites, potentially lurk on attack, and especially hold down information to make sure that way you actually know what's going on around the map. Oh, and your fifth agent is for your choice. In pro play, this will almost always be an info initiator. Think of Fade, Sky, or even a Sova if you're a bit goofy like Evil Geniuses. However, we heckin' love ranked, so getting out a second duelist in the form of a jet isn't all that bad. Plus, if you're in low elo, it's not uncommon to see at least one insta-lock duelist screaming, crying, and begging for a healer. So chances are your comp will have a sage. Not because she's a better healer than Sky, not because a healer is actually a role in the first place, oh, and definitely not because she's often picked on Fracture in pro play because she isn't, but you know, Sage. You'll probably have a Sage. Mastering a Valor map isn't just about understanding it for yourself. You need to understand how to set up your team in a way to get them performing how you want them to. There is nobody better to teach you how to do that than Fnatic Boaster, the world champion IGL. Try out his masterclass course on ProGuides.com today by clicking the link in the description. Now, of course, you might ask, do we even need any of these picks? What else? Is a comp really that important? So for your first question, well, yes, you kind of do need these picks and I'll explain why right now. But don't worry, even if you have a horrible, horrible set of agents, we'll help you with some practical tips on what you can do later on. Okay, so here's the thing. If your comp or, and this is a big one, the enemy comp is missing some crucial agents, there's going to be holes to abuse. And on a map like Fracture, these holes are much bigger and easier to walk through compared to other maps like Ascent. Just to name something, if the enemy team has sadly replaced their breach with a KO, now all of a sudden this map turns into an AWP galore for the defenders. There is no possibility to stun a main, so any agent with an AWP is going to have an easy time holding down that site. And then we haven't even mentioned the oppressive B main peak. Normally, it's a matter of flashing early or even using a stun to forcibly unscope any stubborn jets. But now with the KL, well, what do you do? Remove your Killjoy or Cypher, and not only does it make holding sites much harder on defense, but also on attack, you'll quickly find that there's just too many potential defender pushes that you have to be worried about. You don't want to spread out and hold all four places defenders can aggress from. But if you try to go fast as five, you'll find yourself likely getting stalled out by early utility. And then that previously mentioned problem of map control starts to introduce itself rather quickly. Even removing something innocent looking like a jet or a raise makes it so your enemy team runs into real problems. With no agents to quickly burst out of chokes or take up the space created by your breach's abilities, it's high time you say, hello friend, because that's right, you're getting opt again. The first step to Fracture is to win an agent select. So try to pick a comp that's fundamentally sound and look to abuse clear issues when your opponents fail to do so. All right, the comp's there. Now, how should we actually approach the map? Great question. Let's start by looking over how to approach Fracture's attack side. First of all, a bit like how the map was intended, you can decide to just rush into sites fast, particularly if you have a double duelist, jet plus raise variation. You go 4A or B main, have your sentinel split from the other side, and then you simply plop down the stimmy, stun out, flash sight, and dash plus blast pack in. Happy days, the site is yours at a minute 30. However, for this approach to work, a couple of boxes do need to be ticked. First of all, your breach needs to know what they're doing. Shocker, I know. And your duelist must be able to work with him. To make a rush work, utility must be well-timed, every corner cleared, and there cannot be any gaps for cheeky enemies or quick-on-the-trigger operators to abuse. 
An advantage of playing at higher elos is that most Breach players at the very least know how to stun most common angles. This makes life easier since you, now as the Rays, can just say, Yo Breach, can you flash main early then stun sight? I'll blast pack in. However, depending on your rank and the agents both you and your friends play, you might not have decent coordination as an option. Secondly, and I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but your team needs to know how to properly rush. If you're rushing but are actually kind of slow, then sorry, you're just going to get stalled out waiting until the very moment you die from an unexpected flank. Oh, and also, your team, especially your duelist, must know how to deal with Sentinel utility. If a single Cypher trip makes your Jet or Ray shiver in fear, and they don't really know how to deal with it or go past the utility, then the fast side hit strategy will likely end in a 15 minute minus 25 RR endeavor. Tick these boxes, then go for it. But if not, here's some other options worth trying. If your teammates or team comp leave some things to be desired, don't worry. There's always the legendary arcade heavy B split. You have either one or two teammates on main and send the rest of the squad over to arcade, preferably with the breach. Now, a crucial part to make this execute work is that no one dies in the first 15 seconds. Got it? That means no wide swinging the off, especially on main. So give your main players time to safely walk up. And similarly, let your one or two duelists work arcade together with the breach utility. Watch out for tower. People like to peek that late sometimes. And now it's just a matter of confirming everyone's ready. Three, two, one, go. When doing this hit, it's up to your discretion if you want to send a raise or jet to go up to the tower fast with a breach flash, or if you'd rather crunch the site from the arcade entrance. I usually prefer doing both, with a duelist fast tower and a breach plus another player going arcade to site. But you're not me, so feel free to mix it up and approach it your way. Now of course, some games your team does not care to do anything together, and you're quite literally all on your own. So if that's the case, I feel sorry for you little bro. But also, this next style is probably your best bet. Don't get me wrong, playing fully split up and alone, especially on a map like Fracture, is not ideal. If your enemies are good, you're going to get picked off by AWPs, and enemies will make sure to play together to always guarantee at least a trade. However, if your team isn't great and your comp sucks and there isn't much to lose, well, you may as well try to default a bit, play for picks, and seek out relatively fair 1v1s. Try to slow push areas like Arcade, Dish, or even B Main. Listen for sounds and do your best to catch enemies off guard. No enemies to be found? Don't overcommit by walking into sight alone. Just grab the orb and look for a different fight. This isn't exactly the strategy you'll see in pro games, but if your team is awful, it's a way to make the game more dependent on your ability to seek out and win 1v1 aim duels. One thing I should probably mention because it's basically a round win on its own, when you have a Killjoy ultimate and the opponents don't have theirs, nor a Brimmy ult, you can carefully place the lockdown in under to be awarded with the B bombsite after just a short wait of 13 seconds. If you get ahead in the ult economy, this is easily the most straightforward way to take a sight and if things go according to plan, also a round in the process. Last but certainly not least, for all you Sentinel players out there, if you feel like your team is constantly running into stacks and, well, death, try calling this one. Ask your teammates to create presence on A and let them take A main while you silently walk up to Arcade. When the time's right and you hear rotations, you strike, and you get a nasty flank going into their spawn. Of course, this will only be effective if your enemies are actually over-rotating. But when they do, this is an amazing punish. You can even do it from Canteen sometimes. Okay, now that you have enough ideas to swiftly 12-0 on attack, you need to close it out on defense. What should we do there? Well, first on our list, of course, looking at your opponent's comp and seeing if there's any obvious holes to abuse. Are they lacking a sentinel? Go for thought-out pushes, using utility and at least one teammate to guarantee a trade at worst. And if they're missing a crucial pick and breach and or movement duelist, well, then it's time to bust those ops out. I know what you're thinking, but I'm not playing Jet or Chamber, I can't op. But here's the thing. On a map like Fracture, there's so many easy to hold angles that you can safely play from even without movement. So no matter if you're a Sky, Ray, Sage, or even Brimstone, you'll have plenty of easy to op angles, where you really have to make it bold to get punished. And again, if your enemies don't have a Breach Duelist combo, or they're not doing a proper job, well then oping is going to be child's play. I'll never say you should be stealing, but if you're going to snatch candy, these guys are truly the babies you'll want to take it from. The next idea is another kind of Fracture special, and that's dedicated spawn players. When playing Fracture, most of the time you'll have your Brimstone standing AFK, with his iPad out in the middle of spawn. Of course, this is to be able to play smokes on either side, but even if you don't have a Brimmy, having a spawn player is not a bad idea. We mentioned that rotations on Fracture are quick, but if you're playing in spawn, you'll literally be on either side within 4 seconds of your teammate spotting an enemy. So it's a great way to play on both sides at once. Of course, you don't want to put 5 in spawn, you still need to spot the enemies first after all. But having one or sometimes even two there is not as troll as you might think it is. Next up, something we've already touched upon a bit, but taking map control aggressively on defense can be a great idea, especially when your enemies are not full rushing sites. Even if your opponents do have a sentinel and they're slowly going for 4-1 splits, there's still a lot of angles left to be held. 
If there's a Cypher all alone dish in arcade side, his trips probably won't be enough to save him from the defenders pushing both sides with guns blazing and well placed utility. Alternatively, going back to the Killjoy strat we talked about for attack, well, that's another reason you might want to push when you're up against it on defense. If you feel like the lockdown is coming towards B, why not try to have three players push arcade right at the start of the round? Maybe even with a crunch coming through from Dish. By doing this, you'll be ready to quickly walk into underground and destroy the lockdown right as it's placed. Just be careful that you don't get surprised by attackers peeking arcade somewhat delayed. It is a common counter to the counter. Now, for one final idea you can use to win more Fracture games, setting up for retakes. This strategy is usually a pretty good response when you find that your opponents are just too good at hitting sites. If you notice you can't stop them, well, you don't quite join them, but you do change up your approach. When you want to play for the retake, you try to hold on to most of your utility, let the enemies plant, and then begin an execute of your own the moment the spike goes down. As long as you make sure your enemies don't have great post-plant positioning, you should easily be able to retake, assuming your team works together well. Just to give you an example, if you play Retake B or even A to be honest, you can Breach then instantly Brimolt to get combined effects of two ultimates. You knock the enemies to the back of the site with the Rolling Thunder, also eliminating their movement within seconds, and you'll see the names of Fallen Tributes due to the Orbital Strike. You can probably already tell though, this requires team play and some good coordination, so it's a bit hard to recommend in Ranked. If you're confident in your team, you can try it, but it's not for every game nor every team. And that's gonna wrap it up. If you have any questions remaining, make sure to comment them down below. And otherwise, we'd love to see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.